After finishing the dinner dishes and roughly preparing for tomorrow, I called out to my husband, Bob, and my daughter, Catherine, who were still sitting together on the living room couch watching TV. Both of you, it's getting late. Time to go to bed. The hour hand on the clock had already passed 12. I reminded them that they'd regret staying up so late tomorrow. But out of the blue, Bob said, Nah, we decided we're going to stay up and watch movies all night. We've got a whole list of ones we want to watch, right, Catherine? Yeah. Catherine nodded enthusiastically at Bob's words. Our house has a theater room just for the two of them who love movies. Apparently, they planned on spending the night there watching films again. Well, aren't you two just the perfect father-daughter duo? Pretty much. It's like we're having a little date right here at home. I teased them, and Bob responded in a playful tone. I left the room saying, Well, don't overdo it. But the next day, it happened when I was cleaning the theater room for the first time in a while. Why is this here? I suddenly noticed a bath towel under the couch. It wasn't the kind of thing that would just end up there naturally. It seemed as though it had been stuffed there. With no other choice, I opened up the towel to fold it neatly. But the moment I did, a wave of fear hit me, and I rushed out of the house. What is this? My name is Emily Jenkins, 45 years old. I work as a dietitian at a senior care facility. My job is demanding, but it's fulfilling to support so many people's lives. I live with my husband, Bob, who's a middle school teacher, and my daughter, Catherine. Well, Catherine and I are biologically related. She's Bob's daughter from his previous marriage. Catherine's birth mother passed away shortly after she was born due to illness. Bob and I met at a singles event. Maybe it was because of my job, but I had been thinking about retirement and growing old with someone since I was young, looking for a partner to support me in my later years. However, due to a health condition, I'm unable to have children. Many men seem to want to start families, which made my search for a spouse quite challenging at the time. That's when I met Bob. From the first time we talked, he was upfront about being a single father. He told me his wife had passed away early and his child was still very young, so he was looking for someone who would accept both him and his daughter. Hearing this, I felt like it might have been fate. I couldn't have children, but I didn't dislike them. I regretted my condition. When Bob opened up about his life, I also told him about my inability to have children. Maybe Bob felt the same way as I did at that moment. We quickly exchanged contact information and gradually grew closer. Around the time we were considering a serious relationship, Bob introduced Catherine to me for the first time. I can still vividly remember the day I first met her. Emily, this is my daughter, Catherine. She was clinging to Bob's leg, shyly glancing up at me with curious eyes. In her hand, she held her favorite teddy bear. She looked so small and delicate. She was absolutely adorable. Hi there, I'm Emily. Nice to meet you. I crouched down to her eye level and greeted her warmly. Catherine fidgeted nervously, but responded in a clear, confident voice. Nice to meet you. I'm Catherine. As she spoke, Catherine gave a shy smile. Right after that, she hid her face behind Bob's leg. But the moment I saw that smile, my heart fluttered. She's adorable. At the time, Catherine was three years old, still at an age where she needed a lot of attention. The thought of such an adorable child becoming my daughter filled me with joy. But at the same time, 
I couldn't help but feel deep sorrow for Catherine's birth mother, who never got the chance to watch her grow. Catherine still needed a mother figure in her life. That's when I made a promise to myself that I would take on that role and make her happy in place of her late mother. Over 10 years have passed since then, and I now think of Catherine as my own child. After I married Bob, Catherine quickly grew attached to me. She must have felt lonely without a mother figure in her life. From the outside, we now look like a close-knit family. Now that Catherine is in middle school, she excels both academically and in sports. She's the kind of daughter any parent would be proud of. She's the star of the tennis team and seems to be enjoying a fulfilling school life. Since Bob also played tennis, I often see the two of them chatting about the sport. It's great that Catherine is working hard in sports, and I should praise her for that. But there was one thing that worried me, and that was... Mom, I'm home. Welcome back, Catherine. I heard Catherine's cheerful voice as she returned home from her club activities, and I went to the entrance to greet her. She was carrying both her school bag and a large tennis bag. As I smiled at her cheerful voice, I quickly noticed something that made me frown. Her knees were covered in scrapes. Oh no, did you make another scar? What if those scars don't fade? You need to be more careful. Catherine often comes home with injuries, probably because she gets so absorbed in tennis. Maybe it's not right to say, you're a girl, you should be more careful, but I can't help but worry when I see her getting hurt so often. Still, I know this is proof of how hard she's working at tennis. Because of that, I can't bring myself to be too harsh. I pressed a freshly washed towel to her sweaty face, and she smiled happily. I know, but I just tripped a little. It's no big deal. It's great to work hard, but don't push yourself too much. Okay, Mom. Catherine smiled brightly as I wiped the sweat from her face. Every time I saw her looking so happy and sweet, I couldn't help but give in and spoil her, thinking... Well, I guess it can't be helped. Even though Catherine is in her teenage years, she doesn't seem to mind our involvement in her life too much. The same goes for Bob. In fact, sometimes I think she's closer to Bob than she is to me. This happened on the weekend. Even though Bob works hard all week, he was up early on Saturday and called out to Catherine cheerfully. Catherine, ready to go? Yeah, Mom, I'm going shopping with Dad today. Oh, really? Yep, yeah, I'm excited to try a new drink they have. Catherine responded excitedly. The two of them always seem to go out somewhere on the weekends. It's not like I'm being left out. Part of it is probably because I'm more of a homebody but Bob and Catherine go out together quite often. Unlike me, Bob and Catherine are into sports, so they're more of the outdoor type. Most of the time, their outings are for shopping. They often visit popular character shops or grab sweets together. So basically, you're just using him as your chauffeur. Come on, Emily. Don't say that. You're gonna make me sad. I teased Bob, and he shrugged in response. I'll bring you back a souvenir, so look forward to it. As Catherine said that, she was already heading towards the front door, holding her nice handbag, as if she couldn't wait any longer. Bob, ready to follow, was right behind her when I added, Well, at least she doesn't hate you yet. Of course not. Catherine loves me. Soon enough, she'll be asking you not to mix your laundry with hers. Bob just gave me a vague smile and shrugged off my teasing. Have a good time. Once I saw them off, 
the house suddenly became quiet. I listened as the sound of their car slowly faded into the distance and let out a deep sigh. Maybe there really is something different when you're related by blood. It's not that Catherine and I have a bad relationship, but compared to Bob, it feels like there's a deeper connection between them. I know they're considerate of me being more of a homebody, but I can't help feeling a little left out sometimes. With both of them sharing a love for tennis, I often get the feeling that their conversations flow more easily when I'm not around. Would things change if I tried playing tennis too? I considered it, but remembering how hopeless I've been at sports since childhood, I quickly gave up on the idea. One evening, after finishing the dinner dishes and roughly preparing for tomorrow, I called out to Bob and Catherine, who were still sitting on the couch watching TV together. It's getting late, you two. Time for bed. The hour hand had already passed 12. I understood that sometimes they wanted to have fun, but tomorrow was still a weekday. Knowing they'd regret it the next day, I was about to give them a little reminder when Bob suddenly said, We already decided that Catherine and I are going to watch movies all night. We've got a lot on our list. Right, Catherine? Yeah. Catherine nodded enthusiastically at Bob's words. Bob has always loved watching movies. Even before we got married, the three of us often went to the movies, and maybe because of that, Catherine loves them too. Sometimes, instead of shopping, their weekend outings are to see a movie. Bob even set up his own sound system at home, saying he wanted the best audio for watching movies. He likes to crank up the volume, so we even have a soundproof theater room in our house. Unfortunately, I've never been particularly interested in movies, nor am I knowledgeable about them. Unlike Bob, who was beaming with excitement, I raised my eyebrows. You have work tomorrow, don't you? Of course I do. But I'll manage. Bob gave me a sheepish smile, as if it were obvious. That expression annoyed me, but I understood his point. Both Bob and Catherine are athletes, so they can probably handle their own schedules. After all, sports are all about maintaining your body. Still, Catherine has a tennis tournament coming up. There's no need for her to stay up so late for no reason. But I knew from my experience that no matter what I said in these moments, they wouldn't listen. Well, aren't you two just the perfect father-daughter duo? They shared a bond over tennis and movies that I didn't. I hope they'd forgive me for sounding a bit harsh. I tried to joke, but Bob responded in a playful tone. Yeah, we're pretty close. It's like we're having a little date right here at home. He looked over at Catherine, seeking her agreement, and my irritation grew. I knew it was childish, but sometimes emotions are too strong to control with reason. I started to leave the room in frustration when... Maybe. Catherine's voice, as she responded to Bob, sounded unexpectedly downcast, and for some reason, it sent a strange chill through my chest. When I instinctively turned around, I saw Catherine staring at me. Catherine? It felt like she was trying to tell me something. But that only lasted a few seconds, and before I knew it, she was back to her usual bright smile. It's nothing. Good night, Mom. Good night. Even though I had a bad feeling, I brushed it off, convincing myself it was nothing, and went to bed early. The next day, Bob and Catherine seemed to have stayed up all night watching movies, just as they said, but both of them headed off to work and school as usual. They even seemed more energetic than I did, despite me having slept well. Are they really okay? Still, I couldn't help but worry. 
Maybe the lack of sleep had their bodies too wired. After finishing my work in the morning, I returned home around 3 p.m. and decided to clean the theater room they had used the night before. Since we don't use the room very often, I tend to put off cleaning it. But I figured I might as well take care of it now, so I stepped into the theater room. I wiped down the furniture with a damp towel, then started vacuuming. As I crouched down to clean under the furniture, making sure not to miss any dust in the small spaces. I suddenly noticed a towel had fallen under the couch. Why is this here? The couch is positioned right in front of the big screen. I don't use this room much, but we sit on this couch to watch movies. I remember when we bought it, Bob was very particular about the angle of the backrest and whether it would be comfortable for long periods. I turned off the vacuum cleaner and pulled out the towel. It seemed to be a bath towel, and it was quite large. Why would something like this be in the theater room? It wasn't small enough to slip in naturally. It looked like it had been stuffed under there. With a sigh, I decided to fold the towel back up. But the moment I unfolded it, a wave of fear gripped my throat. What is this? The bath towel was covered in red stains, scattered across its surface. For a moment, my mind went blank, unable to process the scene in front of me. Because, no matter how I looked at it, those stains were blood. It wasn't the kind of blood you'd wipe from a small cut. There was a considerable amount all over the towel. What on earth? I rarely come into this room. The only ones who use it are Bob and Catherine. A terrible feeling welled up inside me, growing stronger by the second. Now that I thought about it, Catherine had been coming home with a lot of cuts and bruises lately. She always had some excuse, saying she fell during practice or nicked herself with her racket, but the frequency was too high and I couldn't forget the way Catherine's eyes darkened just before she went to bed last night. Could it be? Gripping the towel with trembling hands, I felt like I was about to collapse, but I couldn't stay there any longer. I rushed out of the house. Catherine. I hurried to Catherine's school. As I approached the gate, there she was, carrying her usual school bag and a large sports bag. When I called her name, Catherine, who had been chatting with her friends, looked up with a bright, happy expression. Mom, what's wrong? After excusing herself from her friends, she came running over to me, and I felt a surge of affection for her. But at the same time, I saw the visible scars on her knees and arms, and a wave of anger burned inside me. Did you come to pick me up? I just finished practice, so let's go home together. If something had happened to Catherine, there was no way I could stay quiet. I gently pushed Catherine's shoulder and led her away from the school gate to a shady spot under the trees, then looked down at her body, covered in scrapes. Catherine. What's going on? Seeing the pained expression on my face, Catherine seemed to notice that something was off. She looked up at me with a worried expression. Trying to calm my racing heart, I lowered my voice. I'm happy to walk home with you, of course. But first, I need you to tell me the truth. The truth? Catherine tilted her head, looking confused. I pressed my hand against my chest, feeling the rapid pulse beneath my shirt and stared directly into her eyes. Today, while I was cleaning the theater room, I found a bath towel under the couch. It was covered in blood. At my words, Catherine gasped. In an instant, her face went pale. She brought a trembling hand to her mouth and looked down. She seemed so fragile. I instinctively reached out and put my hand on her shoulder. 
Catherine, I'm always on your side. You mean more to me than anything in the world. Please, tell me how that bath towel got stained with blood and why it was hidden. Tell me what really happened in the theater room. Catherine fell silent for a long time. I could tell she was debating whether to tell me or not. But I waited patiently, trusting that she would open up to me. Finally, Catherine spoke, her voice barely above a whisper. The truth is, we didn't watch a single movie last night. I was practicing tennis with Dad. All those times we said we went shopping or to the movies, that was a lie. Dad's been training me in tennis. So, that's what it was. As Catherine confessed, everything suddenly made sense. Bob was also a tennis player, but his passion for the sport was on a completely different level from Catherine's. His obsession with tennis went far beyond just a hobby. In fact, he was still coaching tennis, even while working as a middle school teacher. For Bob, tennis wasn't just a sport. It was practically a lifelong mission. Apparently, Bob once aimed to become a professional tennis player. One time, when we were talking about why he married me, he joked, I married you, Emily, because you can cook meals for athletes. Bob's dedication to tennis was intense. But Catherine wasn't like that. You don't really love tennis that much, do you, Catherine? No, I guess you already knew that. Catherine nodded sadly, her shoulders slumping. Of course, she had the talent to succeed. She'd achieved impressive results in her school tournaments, but it wasn't something she was passionate about. Of course I knew. You're my precious daughter. And don't forget, there was that time you and Bob argued about tennis when you were little. I remember the day when Catherine was still young and we had a small argument about tennis. Bob had suddenly announced that he wanted her to take tennis lessons. He had shown her a brochure he found advertising a tennis school. Catherine, you got real talent. You could be a pro. You could represent the U.S. and even compete in the Olympics. He grabbed her shoulders speaking with such enthusiasm that I frowned a little, thinking that this should really be Catherine's decision. After all, it was her life. Catherine enjoyed physical activities, but it seemed she preferred dancing and singing her heart out. And sure enough, Catherine shook her head. But I like singing more than tennis. Tennis isn't fun. What are you talking about? You've got a gift most people can only dream of, and you're just throwing it away? When Catherine firmly stated that she had other interests, Bob raised his voice at her as if scolding her. I could see Catherine shrinking back in fear, and I couldn't stay quiet any longer. Bob, wait. This isn't your decision to make. It's up to Catherine to choose if she wants to play tennis. Just because you love the sport doesn't mean you can force it on her. I thought I was being perfectly reasonable, but Bob turned on me furious. You don't get it, Emily. You don't understand how incredible Catherine's talent is. She might have talent, but it's up to her how she uses it. Well, yeah, but... I remained calm, not backing down. Bob bit his lip in frustration and went silent. He looked displeased, but I wasn't going to let him force Catherine into anything anymore. Talent isn't a reason to force someone to do something they don't want to. Although Bob seemed to give up, Catherine remembered that incident well, and when she entered middle school, she joined the tennis team. Of course, it was also because of Bob's strong encouragement. Catherine had reluctantly given in, he never gave up, did he? I muttered in a low voice, remembering the deep discomfort and frustration I'd felt back then. I regretted not standing my ground more firmly. After I joined the tennis team, 
Dad didn't say anything at first, but just before a big tournament, I offered some advice and started training him. Since then, he's been dragging me to the court, calling it special training. As she said this, Catherine began to unwrap the surgical tape around her palms. Her palms were covered with blisters and blood. This is awful. I could barely contain my trembling as I gently took her hand, careful not to touch the wounds. It was too painful for me to look at her palm. Whenever Dad says we're going on a date, that's a signal for our training to start. At first, I was happy because he praised me when I played tennis, and it made him proud. But recently, it's just been painful. I hate it. I hate the tennis court now. Catherine said this quietly, almost to herself. I suddenly remembered that last night, when they said they were going to watch a movie, Bob had used the word date. What had seemed like a harmless joke at the time now felt horribly sinister. I wanted to tell you earlier, but Dad told me not to. He said if I snitched, he'd get in trouble and that the other kids wouldn't be able to compete in the tournament. I'm sorry I kept lying. It turns out Bob had been not only forcing Catherine to play tennis, but he'd also been using threats to keep her quiet. Catherine bit her lip and lowered her head, her voice barely a whisper as she apologized. I couldn't take it anymore and pulled her into my arms. This isn't your fault, Catherine. You don't need to apologize. I couldn't forgive myself for not noticing sooner. Last night, when Catherine had stared at me, she had probably been unconsciously reaching out for help. And I had completely missed it. I'm the one who should be sorry for not realizing what you were going through. You've been trying so hard, Catherine. I wouldn't let Bob do this again. With firm resolve, I said this aloud. And Catherine perhaps relieved or maybe just happy to be praised, finally gave me a shy little smile. I doubt Bob ever intended for things to go this far. Sports rely on the body. And if you damage it, you lose everything. Pushing Catherine so hard that she bled went completely against that logic. What began as a genuine desire to support Catherine had twisted into an unhealthy obsession with the sport itself. But that didn't excuse him for hurting her. Catherine, we're going to my parents' house. Pack your things. Now? Right now? Without wasting any time, we quickly packed our bags before Bob got home. We took the train and headed to my parents' house. According to Catherine, Bob's special training sessions usually happened late at night after I had already gone to bed. And they happened often. I knew the only thing I could do was get Catherine away from him for a while. On our way there, I told my parents what had happened. So when we arrived, they welcomed us warmly. Even though Catherine had been busy with her club activities, she seemed happy to reunite with her grandparents after so long. Despite not being related by blood, Catherine's bright and sweet nature made her beloved by my parents as well. But as the time for Bob to come home approached, I noticed that even Catherine, as relieved as she was to be away, started to get anxious. Exhausted from her practice and the emotional toll of sharing everything she had been through, Catherine eventually fell asleep. I left her in the care of my parents, and as I sat alone, contemplating the future, my phone began to ring. Of course, it was Bob. I took a deep breath, trying to calm the storm of anger brewing inside me, and answered the call. Hello, Emily. Where are you? Is something wrong? Catherine's not here either. And with her tennis tournament coming up, staying out so late, even as Bob expressed concern about us, his passion for tennis was clearly clouding his judgment. 
This only fueled the anger I had been holding back. I spoke in a cold, firm voice. If you're asking if something's wrong, yes, something is. I'm at my parents' house with Catherine. Why? He was completely confused. To answer his question, I laid it all out. Last night, you didn't watch any movies, did you? You were giving Catherine a tennis lesson. I heard Bob gasp on the other end of the phone. Ironically, it was almost the same reaction Catherine had when I confronted her by the school gate. And that whole date thing, that's code for your training sessions, isn't it? I found the bath towel under the couch too. That was you who stuffed it there, wasn't it? Pretending to go shopping, they were actually continuing their intense training on the weekends. He was pushing Catherine through such harsh practices that she was bleeding. As I confronted Bob with the facts Catherine had told me, he hastily tried to make excuses. Yeah, okay, the towel is mine, but I just dropped it. And that blood? It's from when I bumped into the side table. Have you seen the state of Catherine's hands, Bob? They're covered in burst blisters and blood. Her palms are completely wrecked. I cut him off before he could continue his string of excuses. You really think you can talk your way out of this? Realizing there was no escaping the truth, Bob fell silent. But after a moment, he began again, in that same defensive tone. You don't get it, Emily. Catherine could become a professional. She has an extraordinary talent, something truly rare. I'm doing this for her sake. Bob's argument was clear. He believed he was pushing Catherine for her own good to fulfill her potential. But how could something she didn't want possibly be for her benefit? It was all Bob's selfish vision. Our conversation escalated into a heated argument. If Catherine doesn't want to play tennis, then it's for nothing. And pushing her until she's hurt, how does that help her? Sports aren't that easy, Emily. You wouldn't understand because you don't play. Every professional athlete has to push through injuries. It's part of the game. But Catherine doesn't want to be a professional. Your whole premise is wrong. Her talent isn't something everyone has. It's a gift others would kill for. And I can bring it out of her. Without me, she'll waste it. Hearing this, something inside me snapped. I remembered Catherine's battered hands, the pain she had been hiding. What talent? This isn't about Catherine. In the end, Bob is only thinking about himself. What he's doing is nothing more than imposing his own ideas on her. Enough already. The one who's the most jealous here is you, Bob. If Bob had been standing in front of me, I might have slammed my hand on the table or even struck him. That's how furious I felt. This is Catherine's life, not yours. She's not some substitute for your failed dreams. No one has the right to force her, not even you. If Bob truly cared about Catherine, he wouldn't push her to the point of bleeding. I understood that Bob was still haunted by his unfulfilled dreams of becoming a professional tennis player. His obsession with the sport was his way of holding on to those dreams. But that didn't give him the right to use Catherine to live out those ambitions. Our conversation was going in circles. Bob refused to see reason, convinced that what he was doing was for Catherine's benefit. He truly believed that pushing her was the best thing for her. I couldn't waste any more energy on him. I firmly said, That's enough. I'm divorcing you, Bob, and I'm taking custody of Catherine. What? You can't just make that decision on your own. I had been thinking about this the entire way back to my parents' house. We had once built what seemed like a happy family. But in truth, it was only on the surface.
and it relied on Catherine's silent suffering. If Bob couldn't let go of his obsession with tennis, then I had no choice but to protect Catherine. After all, we were family, even if we weren't connected by blood. I can't trust you with Catherine, I said coldly, and ignoring his continued shouting, I hung up the phone. As I had told him, we went through with the divorce. Bob didn't agree right away, and it escalated to a court battle. But with Catherine's testimony, I was granted full custody. It was later revealed that Bob had also been pushing his students through practices that made them bleed. The members of the tennis team he coached were in the same situation as Catherine. The extreme training he imposed on the tennis team he coached became a serious issue, so much so that it was reported in the news. Naturally, Bob was fired. But even then, he insisted he had done nothing wrong. Honestly, I never want to have anything to do with him again. Mom, I'm home. Welcome back, Catherine. Catherine's voice echoed from the entrance, full of energy after returning from practice. I walked to the front door to greet her. And there stood Catherine, wearing her new school bag and beaming with a radiant smile. Since then, Catherine and I had moved into a new home close to my parents' place, and we'd started a new life. Since my parents' house is nearby, Catherine often goes to visit them. They adore her like their own grandchild, so Catherine feels comfortable enough to let herself be spoiled by them. At her new middle school, Catherine joined the choir club. As always, she excelled in whatever she put her mind to, and it didn't take long for her talent to be recognized. Perhaps because she had chosen this path herself, Catherine seemed more vibrant than I had ever seen her before. It made me so happy to see. Mom, tomorrow I'm going to karaoke with my friends. Is that okay? Tomorrow was the weekend. Catherine was free to make her own choices now, without being tied down by anything. Relieved that she was making friends in her new environment, I smiled and nodded. Of course, just don't stay out too late and be careful not to overwork your voice. Okay. Catherine's face lit up with joy, her smile brighter than ever. She waved her now fully healed hands and bounced up the stairs, her footsteps full of life.